back in the day the Truman Show and Truman said something like this good morning good evening and good night and I don't know when you're going to listen to this show so all those things good morning good evening good night show a little gratitude this week we are leaning in towards oh who is this it's your boy Tommy D the nonprofit sector connector but we are leaning towards Thanksgiving which is uh certainly a time of reflection a time to consider what have others done for you and what have you been able to really make an impact and do for others? So consider that. We'll talk more about that, I'm sure, today. We're going to talk a lot about inclusion today, which is an important word. Um, this is, I was going to say, this is your professionals and animal lovers show because I'm used to saying that on Wednesdays, but this is not your professionals and animal lovers show. So if you're looking for that show, me, Valerie, and I here at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays. This is Friday morning. It's 10 a.m. And I'm the nonprofit sector connector, and I'm coming to you above the second floor, below the roof. That's right, in the attic. And every single week, we bring you philanthropy and focus. What is philanthropy and focus, Tommy D, you might say? And I would say, well, here's what it is. I believe that nonprofits change our world. I used to say like every day or every week or every second nonprofits make an impact on our world. And without these organizations and without their employees, their associates, their volunteers, all the stakeholders, this stuff doesn't get done. This work doesn't get done. And I know, I don't know for a fact, but I think my friend Christine, who's here with me today, is going to share with me, Tommy, it's not about me. It's about my volunteers. It's about my board, because that's what nonprofit people say. You don't see a nonprofit people person come on this show or any show for that matter, at least in my experience, where they talk about it's all about me, man. Look how great I am. Look at me, Mr. and Mrs. CEO running the show. You know, you don't see that. You might see that in other industries, not our sector. So my job, my mission was become a passion. And before we get started, shout out to my buddy, Emily Shulman. We're getting the band back together. We started this show January 8th and, and Emily did, a, you know, the beginning shows with me. So it's great to see you and, and have you in the presence with me this morning. Uh, so I'm grateful for you being here. We'll start with that. But I'm here to amplify these messages and tell the stories for these organizations. So what's the show look like? Well, we started January 8th. It is the uh, 19th of November in the year 2021. We've almost done a whole year of these shows. Each week, it's one organization. It's one leader. It's their story. It's the story of their organization. The genesis of the organization. Why they're even a thing. Why, you know, what happened? What was the catalyst? How did the leader become involved in the sector? What are their programs? What do they do? How are they making an impact? And what do they need, right? You want to play nonprofit sector connector guy? Well, that's not guy, but just nonprofit sector connector. You want to be that? Well, you got to ask the right questions. You got to find out what people need. Just as a, for instance, I was on a phone call with a woman yesterday who told me about a nonprofit organization down in Jersey. Um, they have an incredible mission. We'll talk to them at some point in the future, but they have an like what I would say, an obvious to me, alignment with two other nonprofits in my world. Some collaboration can happen. I'm going to bring them together. This is what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to get together. We're supposed to collaborate. We're supposed to lift up the sector together. Um, all right, I'll tell you this. I had a late night last night, okay? Uh, I don't get to go out. I don't leave the attic all that much, but I did last night and it's relevant to this story, but I will tell you this. I'm not, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, they're called Dunkin' now. But Dunkin' Donuts does not sponsor this show. Maybe you guys should because I drink a lot of your coffee. But I sort of feel like I was going like this. Ba -ba 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 because drinking this coffee is like when Popeye drank his spinach because I was a little tired today. But I feel really charged up right now. And I'm just getting ready to get fired up. So thank you for my coffee. Thank you for my wife getting me some coffee because I certainly needed it. But last night I was at the um, Best Buddies of New York Party for a Purpose, which Christine, you're probably familiar with them. We'll talk about it in a second. Yep, thumbs up. And um, I sit on the state uh, advisory board for that organization. It's all about inclusion. Uh, there was a um, young man there, Zach Smith. I got a photo with him. He's um, in their jobs program for Best Buddies and he's working uh, with the NFL. He's a statistician for the NFL and he gave a great speech and he kind of got, he joked. He said, I get paid to watch football. 
for a like that's his living is watching football and he was so jazzed and they do great work so let's talk about the organization that we have here today so you may not know this about me or i may have shared it here on the show but my cousin linda had special needs and linda passed away about nine or ten years ago and like many incredible families i'm not putting myself in this i'm talking about my aunt and my cousins like many incredible families who can turn a tragedy into a mission and turn a tragedy into a passion, they founded the Lindy Lou Foundation. And that's in, in Linda's memory. And all the money we raise goes to organizations who are providing services to the IDD, intellectually and developmentally disabled individuals. That's super important to me. You've probably heard me tell you there's two things that are very important to me. It's how we address mental health issues in this country and how we take care of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. If you've watched the last 40 or some odd episodes of this show, you know that theme runs through most of those shows. And that's where we're going to go today. So my friend Christine Fitzpatrick was the recipient of some funds from the Lindy Lou Foundation years back, which um, that's how we met. And I said, I called you up. I remember I had a, because I had a car, like not a car full of checks, but I had like a, a pouch full of checks I was handing out. And it's funny how um, my friend Michael Katakis at the Spirit of Huntington, my friend who is just recently is courting me to join their board. Um, we met because I had a Lindy Lou check. Katie McGowan, I don't know if you know Katie at Horse Ability, Christine? Yeah. So, so Katie McGowan, shout out, first episode of Philanthropy and Focus back January 8th of this year. Um, Katie, I guess you make friends when you bring checks, but like Katie became became a friend of mine yeah. and we had an incredible day out there on Saturday at Horse Ability, but I joined her board recently. So I don't know if I can join the board of every um, grantee that Lindy Lou has supported. That would be a lot of boards I have to join, but it is a special thing to see um, Linda, my cousin Linda, and I saw her picture. There's a picture of her and I, um, I keep in, in over my dresser in my bedroom. I saw it on the way up there. I don't think about this a lot and I didn't think I'd talk about this, but Linda's legacy lives on in um in all the work we do and the money we raise to, to give to these other organizations you know i say we're we don't do the work we're raising the money and then we get it out to organizations like christine so let's jump right in first of all i've i've gone on and on and maybe the caffeine's already hit me this is not about me today it's only about me to draw you guys in and then it's about my guest christine good morning how are you and welcome to the show and welcome to the top of my house. Welcome to the attic. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm all jazzed up, super excited. Woo, baby. Wait a minute. You think you're fired up now? Wait till you hear the lyrics to the theme song when we come back from break. I don't know if you've watched the show or, think, or seen this theme song yet, but this is going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Did Absolutely. You see, you see the video I did about, um, you know, with singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? To, yep. To this. <laughs> I like being silly and I, you know, like, look, I, I don't want to be silly just for silly sake, but to, to get the story going, to tell the story, it's important to me to do that. So if you didn't see that video, what I did was I had my Metsy's jerseys on, on here, which is on the back of the chair. Uh, it's a Johan Santana jersey. Huh? How do you say that word, Tommy? Santana, that's the one. Jersey. And um, and I was, I literally just sang with my incredible singing voice. I sang, take me out to the ball game, but I did the whistling part. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. And then did the whole thing. And then we, and then, uh, and then I announced that this was going to happen today. Christine, we know each other for a number of years. I remember the first day I met you, I, we met at Starbucks out of Long Island yep. to, right, to trade, to give you the check. I had the big old Lindy Lou check. I'm sure we took some picture cause I was all about that then. That's way before this, this show and way before the nonprofit sector connector Woo, was even a thing. And, um, I, we have to get out there. I, you have some events coming up. We're going to talk about, I think, you know, I want to be at those events. Maybe, maybe I'll dress up as an elf. We'll talk about that. Please do. I, I will do it. I, fine. Okay. I wasn't going to, but since you said that I'll do it now. All right. Let me read something real quick. So the league of yes is a baseball league for children with all abilities. We are the league of yes, because we do not say no to the children or their families. It doesn't matter your age or disability. You can always play baseball with our help, with our help. A big theme of this program has always been support. We all need it at just different times. And it's not about what people can or cannot do. It's people do things differently. And how can we help that? I had uh, John Kemp here from the Viscardi School a couple months back. And there's a young man who's uh, on the video on, on the Viscardi School's website. And he says, look, I could do everything you can do. 
I just do it differently. And if we just yeah. were compassionate, I, you know, I long way home last night and I, um, I was talking to a, a, a gentleman and, you know, we end up talking about compassion. And if we just had more compassion for each other and understood each other, and I'm talking, you know, from, from a perspective of, of differences in, in race, which really there is only one race, guys. That's a whole nother conversation. I talked about that another day. Actually, Vera Jones uh, from Colorful Talks will be here after the Thanksgiving break, and we'll be talking a lot about race. But mm-hmm. compassion around different things, different abilities. We'll talk a lot about inclusion. So in 2010, Christine founded the, the uh, what was then called the Miracle League of Long Island in, in association with, <clears throat> excuse me, the Miracle League organization. And in 2014, and we'll talk about why and how that all happened, she and her board made the bold decision to change the name to the League of Yes, where you can experience success. Yes, where you can experience success. So words have meaning. Words have meaning. And my wife told me this, and I know this stuff. My wife said, watch what you say, because I was talking some stuff about myself and it wasn't so positive. All right. You got to remember words have meaning. So her mission, Christine's mission is to establish and sustain baseball programs for people of all ages with disabilities and also to make a positive difference in the lives of disabled children through recreation and to provide physically active outlets. Her goal is to spread the word and joy of this program nationally. All right, so let's talk about spread the word of joy. Look at your shirt. Let's, uh, if you're not watching us on Facebook, sorry, but I'll read the shirt. It says, be good to people. <laughs> wow. Wow. Pretty basic there, right? Why don't we try that? Oh, so funny how I even just found this shirt too and not even realizing, to be completely honest with you, until I put it on this morning. And I looked in the mirror, I was like, I haven't seen this shirt in forever. I'm packing up my home. And there it was. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to wear this. I'm so psyched. I'm so psyched that you wear that, you wore that shirt. I have a shirt that says, be the good in the world. It's, uh-huh. you know, believe, it says, believe there's good in the world. And then it says, be the good in the world. But it's all in one thing. And I love wearing that shirt. And I actually have to, what I think I'm going to do is get some philanthropy and focus shirts made up with that logo. Uh, it, you know, because with that saying, because I think it's important. So let's start at the beginning. We're going to have to go to a break in a second, but let's just start real quick. Let's, what was the catalyst? Like, how did you personally get involved in nonprofit work? There must be a story there. Let's start it. And then, and then we're going to take a quick break and come back. But get, how does that even happen? How do you get involved with nonprofit work? All right. First of all, thank you for having me on this show. Greatly appreciated. Um, awesome. So it all started back in like 2006. I was actually selling um, synthetic turf athletic fields and my territory was in Westchester. And I was trying to get into the parks department and I was asked to be on the board of the Miracle League. Had no idea uh, what the program was all about, but I'm in sales and I need to network and I want to get into the parks department. This is all true here. So um, first play of the game, I'm at home plate. And this boy with cerebral palsy gets up. His name is Julian. And his aide says to me that he has no facial expressions. He has a yes index card and a no index card on his wheelchair. That's how he answers you. And I'm like, okay, not having any experience with special needs children. So gets up to bat. His buddy hits the ball for him, gets behind his wheelchair, runs him around the bases. Now he's coming. I get chills every time I tell the story. He's coming from third base to home base. And this beautiful child had the most amazing smile on his face. It's ingrained in my brain, will always be my memory, ear to ear, most beautiful smile. And I, I, it just like shot me in the heart. And I looked at the woman and I said, don't tell me that he doesn't have any emotions. He just hasn't been happy. And that really hit me in my heart of like how sad that there are human beings that unfortunately go through this in life, right? Basically being a shell, that they understand what's going on in the inside, but they have no joy in their life. And it was that moment that I was in. Right. in. You go there, you go there as a networker, you go there as yep. a dev person, right? Nothing wrong with that. We all, <clears throat> excuse me, well, you all combine, you know, our philanthropy with our work because we do have to keep the lights on and pay the mortgage. Right. Sure. But what it did for you and I, I got the chills, too. So it was contagious. Yeah. I, I saw it happening uh, in my mind. You know, that's game changing. And that's what got you hooked. And now we got them hooked. And we're going to go to a quick break because this is philanthropy and focus. It's Friday morning. <laughs> Christine Fitzpatrick, founder, executive Woo! of the League of Yes is here. Your boy, the nonprofit sector connector has already had too much coffee coming at you from the top of my house. 
We'll be right back. Emily, take us to break. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. All right, that's what you should do all the time. You should cut through the static. You shouldn't always join me like in the attic, like just in life, cut through the static and do different things. But on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern time, just after you cut through the static, join your boy in the attic. But again, I've told you this, please join me virtually in the attic. I don't have a lot of room for an audience to be here in the attic with me. One day, Maybe I'll have a new attic with lots of chairs and we can do the show in front of a live studio audience. Remember, they used to say that in front of a, this show is being recorded in front of a live studio audience. So this, this show is actually being recorded in, in front of the live world. So Christine, show me that t-shirt again that you were just showing me. So this is, you talk about shirts, right? And what they say. So this is the shirt that I had made up for our volunteers when you come and you volunteer and you get to take this home with you. What good have I done today? What's going to have I done today? What a mantra. It's a, huh? Yeah, it's a Ben Franklin quote. I saw that when I was down in Philadelphia, that, and I was like, this is perfect for uh, the people that come and volunteer because that is what good that they did for the day. You know, not, not to change subjects, but I think it's related. You know, I'm on this mission to do 60 days of service right now, and I've completed 25 days of service. And um, yeah, and it's and I tell you that again, I, I've tried to say this is not to say, look at Tommy go and he's doing service. It's more to just say, look, you can go out and work in in like I did this week, a food pantry uh, for five or six hours and, and make an impact. And and I got to tell you, Christine, don't tell anybody. But as selfless as this stuff is, it makes me feel really freaking good. Yeah. So it's kind of a little selfish, too. So how about that? What good have I done today? If you ask yourself that, everybody. Between, let's say you are in your waking hours, 12 or 14, 15 hours awake, think about it throughout your day. How did I make an impact? How did I help? What good have I done? A bunch of years ago, I met a guy um, called John Maxwell, who's written a whole bunch of books on leadership and professional development and personal development. And I met him up in Utica, New York, one time at a luncheon. And he talked about how are you adding value and how are you making an impact? And I literally ask myself that all the time. How am I adding value and how am, how am I making it? And I think if, yeah, we also have to make a living and I understand all that, but through that, where are we making an impact? So let's go back, talk about an impact. This young man, Julian, I would argue, changed the trajectory of, of at least a portion of your life. Is that fair? 100%. 100%. So, you know, I, I think sometimes in life, we always wonder what our calling is, right? Or some people go through life and they don't ever have that calling or feel that calling. 
that was my day that that was my calling. I didn't know what the future was going to hold for me. If you would ask me on that day back in 2006, would you be running your own nonprofit, you know, with 300 kids and 1200 volunteers? I'd be like, you're crazy. I don't know anything about nonprofits or running, you know, a baseball program, but just, um, you know, I'm also a single mom and it's very important to me for my children when they were younger. Um, like you talk about compassion, right? Empathy. And I wanted to teach my children that. So I would bring them to the field in Westchester every Saturday and Sunday. And I will brag one moment about my kids. Uh, you know, they are the most compassionate boys that you will ever meet. And um, my youngest son actually is he was volunteer EMT during, during the whole entire COVID. And he is currently serving in our United States Army. He's an Eagle Scout. So I just had to do a little bragging about that. But it was really important um, for me to have. How old is your son? My youngest son is 24. Oh, sorry, 22. I'm aging him. And my oldest is 26. Wow. Um, wow. So, yeah. And who's serving? Your younger son is serving in... in yes, the, he's in the Army. He's in Texas. Well, first of all, it goes without saying, but thank you for his service and thank you for, you know, uh, being that sort of mom that that inspired service, right? And and I wonder, you know, and I without asking this young man this question, I, I don't know the answer, but I wonder if if some of what he watched growing up and what you were doing inspired him to, to serve... You know, first he said as an Eagle Scout, as a volunteer EMT, yeah. and then, you know, this ultimate level of service to serve his country. So um, do, do, do you ever reflect on that? Has he has he kind of said some of that's what he watched growing up? I don't know if he has said that, <clears throat> but I have a girlfriend of mine, which is a compliment and not all at the same time. When he was doing everything with COVID, I was getting very worried because I'm um, I'm a cancer survivor. So. I had to be very careful and I was getting upset with him and a girlfriend turned around and said to me, well, what do you expect him to be? This is what you've showed him his whole entire life is to help people and to, you know, give service. And I'm like, yeah, oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but not, not right now, but not now, right? That's right, <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, right. Well, you know, I, I mean, what a crazy, scary year. I mean, being out last night and, and shout out again to Best Buddies, you know, because they are such a special organization. And if you haven't collaborated with them, we need to talk about that because I'm yeah. very hooked in with them. We've opened through the Lindy Lou Foundation some school programs, but talk about them just for a second. It was like, it was so great to be in yeah. a room. And, and, you know, it's like you get to the door and you got to take out your ID and I got to take out my phone to show I'm vaccinated. And, to, you know, they're doing the right thing. Um, it was kind of an indoor outdoor situation at the Bowery Hotel. So you had some, you know, you get out, get some fresh air and stuff like that. But it, and I've been to several events getting back into the, the groove. But I'll tell you, Christine, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I was like out three nights a week back in the day, like doing that stuff, whether it be a gala wow. or a working event. But it's also it's been gone. It hasn't, yep. been, it's been, which was such a, like a, a current, uh, it always, a concurrent thing always ran through my week. I was always out, I was doing a thing and that, so being out, it's, it makes me appreciate these things even more to be at events. You know, um, I love the fact that, you know, that this young man is doing service because he watched his mom do it. And <laughs> I know it for a fact, because it's happening in my own house. When the six-year-old son of mine comes up to me and goes, Hey daddy, When's the next day of service? I want to do it with you. Love um, it. Dude, there it is. That's the point. That's the reason. Again, yep. I tell you guys, it's not about me and you don't have to do 60. You got to do what's right for you. And maybe two weekends a month, volunteering at Eisenhower Park with Christine and her organization to do it. Maybe that's it. Maybe you say, I'm all in, I'm retired, or I have the time, or I have the kind of career that let me, lets me do whatever. And you want to join somebody's board. Yes. Right. Yes. Yours. All right. Please. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll get to that point, <laughs> that point about what you need soon. But let's talk about like the evolution of this organization. So you go. So the Miracle League. So there was already like infrastructure there. So tell me how that, right. how that works. It, it's 06. You go, I'm in. I'm going to do this thing that I have no idea what the heck I'm going to do. Where do you start? Because there's a lot of organizations that are just getting started that plug into what we're doing here. Right. So um, I all believe that this, how it unfolded was, was totally a godsend. So after taking my kids back and forth, I decided that, you know what, I want to do this on Long Island. We don't have anything like this on Long Island. 
I put on my big girl pants and I'm like, I'm going to raise money. I'm going to build a synthetic turf field. I actually had an architect friend of mine, you know, do a CAD drawing for me and I'm going to raise a million dollars. Okay. So my first um, interview that I went to was the town of Brookhaven, uh, the commissioner, uh, Eddie Morris. And I gave him my pitch. I had a beautiful PowerPoint. And I said, hey, how about you earmark me $250,000 for next year? So after I picked him up off the floor from his laughter, uh, he was like, you know what, Christine, I can do something better. And I was like, what is it? Better, like, than, better than a quarter of a million bucks? Yeah, and it was. So he drove me up to Bald Hill, uh, the amphitheater out east, and there already was a handicap accessible field. Beautiful handicap accessible bathrooms, dug out. It gets used once a year. He looked at me and he said, this is yours. Wait a minute. So let me go back for a second. So this was used for what one charity event a year and no one. And again, not to blame anybody, but no one had taken the advantage and said, wait a minute, we have this facility. Let's use it. What was it being yeah. used for? Is it, was it-, it was being used for um, wheelchair softball. So oh. they only used it like once or twice during the year. So I believe what their hope was when they built it that organizations would come. You know, it's it's obviously not an easy task, overnight task to create and build, you know, a program. So it's not like somebody could just go like this. And right, okay. right. Did you do Dream of Genie? Yeah. I did, I did. I Dream of Genie. If you're only listening, well, you guys might be too young to even know what I, I was dream. just gonna say you that. Know. You guys don't even know. But my friend Christine did this thing where she, you know, you fold your arm, bounce <laughs> the head, and did a dream. Of dream. I remember Bewitched, where Samantha used to wiggle her nose. I was just gonna say that too. I can't, I can't twiggle my nose. So I, I can too, and but then I start sneezing, so I don't want to do that right now because we're live, and I don't want to be sneezing all over the place. Uh, so talk about you, you know something I caught, and I have to underscore things when I think it's cute and funny. So I, I just, and I bet my buddy Mick Collins is listening and he was named after Mickey Mantle. So shout out to Mick who's watching us on wow. Facebook. Mick, maybe you caught this too. But Christine said about the field out in Long Island, she said they, they thought, thought if it, people would, if they built it, that people would just show up and use it. Maybe think of Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. So that kind of made me think of that. And guess what? They did build it and you came to their place and eventually what happens? I mean, it, yeah, yeah. It, it gives you in the field. He says, and what was his name again? Can we shout out the, the, uh, sure. Uh, Eddie Morris, commissioner of town of Brookhaven. Got it. Okay. So tell me about this. Field. The whole town of Brookhaven has been amazing. They just actually built this a synthetic turf field with, uh, Kevin Laval. So, um, it's been, you know, they've been just amazing to us. So what was your question? I was just saying, so you get this field now. Now what what happens? Oh, so it was actually kind of funny when he said that to me because I was going to give myself like two or three years to raise money, go back to school, understand a nonprofit, you know, how to run a baseball league, although I played softball all my life, but I never ran a league before. So when he's like, oh, this is yours, make it work. I just kind of was like, oh, shit. Yeah, no kidding. What am I yeah. going to do? Yeah. So I got a handful of a bunch of my girlfriends that are professional women, whether they're in sales or marketing. Uh, we got together and uh, my friend Gina and I literally went knocking on doors, knocking on doors, handing out flyers, free pro. We made it free, free program, free uh, food, come on down, play. We had maybe 30 kids that year. We're knocking on, but like, did you have any... Did you know that there was a child with uh, with disabilities in that home or like? No, I wasn't. I'm sorry. I should have been more specific. <laughs> Knocking on doors like AHRC, uh, house, you know, cerebral palsy of NASA. We were just knocking on all those. Right, so you're reaching out to, to organizations that we know here yes. on Long Island that are in that IDD space that have different programs. And you're wow, that sounds a lot like collaboration. That sounds like somebody who thinks they don't know what they're doing running a nonprofit. But because <laughs> because you're a business development salesperson, you know yes. what networking is. So you knew how to do that. You know, I think there's an opportunity in this space for for more education around that. In fact, I'm going to come up with a series of, of talks around that, around networking and leveraging relationships Let me know. for nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. So right now it's all, you know, in the gray matter. You know, some of it's been written in a notebook somewhere, but it's it's really something I'm formulating because I think, you know, my unique 
sort of value proposition and personality and who I am, what I do on the connection side, I think it, I think there's a lot that I could add value to, to this. Absolutely. Session. Yeah. So playing around that for sure. All right. So I see you knocking on doors and maybe you're a Viscardi and, and rise life services yeah. out in Riverhead, you know, formerly ADD to the development of disabled shout out to Charlie Evdos and his whole team. They're a client of ours. We do a lot of work with them. Um, and, and, and you're starting to get a groundswell and you say, come down for some sandwiches, come down for some baseball. We're going to do this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and don't tell me what happens next because we're going to go to a break so we'll go to a break i see you when as you go to break watch my friend christine she's knocking on doors and gina was there too <laughs> we'll be right back everybody 90 seconds philanthropy and focus in the attic Howdy. i am joseph franklin mcelroy host of the new podcast gateway to the smokies it airs on talkradio.nyc every tuesday night from 6 p.m to 7 Every episode is dedicated to memorable experiences in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and surrounding areas. This show features experts and locals who will expound upon the richness of culture, history, and adventure that awaits you in the Smokies. Tune in every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 on talkradio.nyc. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. know where the attic is do you know where your attic is well it's probably at the top of your house because that's where mine is and that's where i am all the time and i am most fired up at 10 a.m eastern time on fridays because i get to spend time with my nonprofit friends on this program called philanthropy in focus and by now you probably know that everywhere else in the world focus is spelled with an f but when you're in the attic it's spelled with a ph because that's how I like it, and that's the way it is. So if you're looking for me and you want to catch me on email, Tommy D at Philanthropy in Focus. I just told you it's P-H-O-C-U-S dot com. Tommy D.NYC on the Instagram. Tommy D, believe it or not, Tommy D.NYC on TikTok. I'm not real sure what I'm doing there yet, but I am playing around with it. I think there's going to be some fun stuff, especially the more I can get out of the attic, the more I can do some cool stuff. I think TikTok would be really, a, I'll say a bad word, but I think it'd be a pisser to have TikTok and do some stuff at the field with you. Like, you yes. Know, like, oh, the kids want to do it. They're all about TikTok. Let's do it. Really has over 5,000 followers. One of your participants does? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's they all have their TikTok accounts. Luke, who plays on my skills team, um, I think he's, he, I mean, he's got thousands of followers. That's awesome. Hysterical. They loved doing TikTok. And you should be doing TikTok on all of your philanthropy that you're doing here oh, yeah, and the days of service yeah yeah i've yeah. been doing videos but you know what it is I, I it's a lot to like take in because it's there's so yeah. many different things only not an excuse but it's like there's so many different mediums like how like somebody said to me like recently uh can we communicate on like facebook messenger i'm like dude i, I got like 19 ways that information is coming right. at me and it's just mad I'm, and i'm not it's not just me it's it's difficult Everybody. to manage like Oh, Christine sent me that note, but where the heck was the note? Was it on, was it on LinkedIn? Was right. it on Facebook? Was it on Instagram? It's, it's crazy. So I used to think this, and I said this recently, another place I went clubhouse and I went to a clubhouse the other night and I said, it's funny, this will show you that I'm old. 
I used to think, Christine, that people went to Facebook or one of these other places to make a connection that would eventually turn into a phone call or let's say in this world, a Zoom call, right? A meeting. Right. But no, that is the whole relationship. Like people communicate just on Facebook and like they have full conversations and dialogues. And and like I used to think even on LinkedIn, I'm like, all right, why are people sending me a note on LinkedIn? Like, here's my email address. Let's move this off of this platform. But I'm and certainly I know the platforms don't want you to take the conversation off there. But right. even the other people, people are kind of addicted to these places. I mean, my assistant and I, we use WhatsApp. So, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I, sometimes I don't know if I'm coming or going, which, which social, <laughs> which way I'm supposed to talk to people. I like to talk in case you couldn't tell. So that's always my favorite method of communication. So, but I, I will tell you, efficiency wise, being on Zoom and Skype and all this stuff, it has really improved. And I, I wonder, even from your business perspective, um, do you, are yeah, you yeah. out, like, how, did you hit any kind of speed bumps during COVID or you just kind of pivoted as they say right to online you know the funny thing is i actually started zooming i was with a logistics company um uh, right before uh we went <clears throat> everybody went to their home so i started zooming before my company started zooming and doing teams i started reaching out to people um because i always did zooms for other reasons whether it's nonprofit, you know my board meetings and whatever just it's easier just to get everybody together and then zoom took off like crazy. So I actually had to do a lot of networking through Zoom and it was difficult, but I made it work. And to be honest with you, now that a lot of companies are used to this type of method of meetings as a salesperson, instead of me getting in my car, going into the city and maybe having just one appointment or two, that's my whole entire day, right? Then the cost of taking somebody out for lunch and, and the train and what have you, where now I can make six calls on it's Zoom and it's changer. socially accepted. It's totally a game changer. Totally. Like, so we're in the insurance business. We own uh, an employee benefits mm -hmm. firm. So we do a lot of work with the for-profit sector, but with a major focus on nonprofits, really helping companies attract and retain talent by using benefits. And I will tell you, our last meeting was March the 11th. It was a Wednesday, right? And we were doing an open enrollment for a client and we were following up the 18th. We were going to be there two Wednesdays in a row. But March 13th, the world shut down, but our firm did not shut down. And like most firms didn't shut down. And ever since our clients, we're all on Zoom, at, you know, prospective clients, clients, um, when we're talking to employees in our groups that need education, we do all that. It's all done on the on this platform. So it's it's been a game changer. And I will tell you, I'm old school. I'm the guy that was knocking on doors, you know, and I'm the guy that was out in the community. Like I'm a sales guy. So yep. that's what we did, right? Like, you know, I'm thinking we're of the same era and, you know, we would, that's what you did. You went out shaking hands, the whole thing, right? A lot of hugs. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I didn't know if we'd ever be allowed to hug again, but apparently we are. I found out last night we're allowed to hug again, but I, exactly. that was like the thing, like going out, just seeing people, you know, and, but I love that, but I will tell you the efficiency of doing it this way is, is a game changer. It really, really, truly it is, is a game important. changer, but I, I do like, I like in person. You can I do both now, right? You could do yeah, both. But, absolutely. But agree, and then we'll get back to what we're here for. But don't you agree that some of those meetings you used to go to, you really didn't need to drive to? I, yep. Like, come on, man. Like, real, this was like a 40 minute meeting, right? And it took me 45 minutes to get here, right? I got to find parking. If I'm in Queens, I'm guaranteed to get an orange ticket on my windshield either way, <laughs> even if I put money in the meter. Yeah. You know, Me for too. whatever, I got to find some other reason to give me a ticket, right? That always happens. And, and it's just like, yes, networking works much better in person. But I will tell you, and in my own experience, and we run a national networking group, we've been really successful lately, you know, in the last year and a half in, yeah. in getting people engaged in it. And it works. But nothing, I think, ever beats being together, you know, sure. being able to just, you know, the, 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 the visual cues of, of a conversation, especially when we're in a sales meeting, you know, things like that. Um, so, you, you know, programmatically, I mean, it's this is as basic as, as playing catch. This is baseball, right? But it's different. So what is that actually? We can go back to, you know, to when Eddie Morris and Brookhaven have done this work. We can go back to that. And where do you, how does that all happen? And what, what, is a, what does a Saturday morning look like for the league? So back when we first started, we obviously didn't have any money to do any marketing and stuff like that. And we're still running on shoestrings, but we're very, very successful when it comes to the children, families and the community. 
So um, I always tell everybody the story of like our first year, barely three, 30, I'm sorry, 30 kids, not even 30 volunteers. We did, um, I wanted to do a test pilot in 2010. So we did fall. And I said to my girlfriends, I'm like, you know what? Let's just throw it against the wall. Let's see what works, fix. We'll tweak it over the winter and we'll come back even stronger in the spring. And that technically was our first full season. So fast forward, we are 10 years. Hold on, I got another shirt for you, Tom. Dude, I love swag, by the way. I mean, I'll write you a, a donation check, I'm telling you. Yeah, but I need some years swag. of possibilities. Wait, so let me Speaking see the top donation. So, show me to get so me. Oh, so you got all your sponsors on the back. So it's League of Yes and yeah. Long Island with two hearts, and each heart representing oh, where the fields are. And it's 10 years of possibilities we are celebrating this year. Is it purple? It's blue. Blue, show me the back again. I saw some sponsors on there. Yeah, and so these were um, some of our sponsors. You got? How do you know Premier Payroll Solutions? That's those are Mike D'Onofrio is like one of my close friends. Oh, that's funny. It's one of my friends. Um, her friend works there, Stacy. Stacy, yeah, she's one of the, yeah, she's one of the partners over there. She runs. Oh, how funny! Yeah. So in fact, right now as we speak. I was, I was, it had timing worked out. I was going to try and go out there this afternoon, but they have a truck full of turkeys being delivered to their office. That oh, that's then awesome. Yeah. That then they're taking out to Long Island Cares. And I, it, it was like killing me because I'm like, dude, I want to be there. I'm going to be with Christine doing the show. And it's like, you know, I can't even check off a day of service. Like, I don't get credit for just talking about the fact that they're giving turkeys away. I got to actually go carry turkeys, you know? Well, like, you're doing service right now. I, I know, I know. But you know yes. what? Look, Try being Tommy D, man. It's like, it's unstoppable. Like my brain, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You should really split yourself in half. Like I would think a clone would be great or a twin brother or a twin yeah. sister for that matter, or triplets, triplets. But that would mean that the world might fall off its axis if there was like three of this maniac running around. But I'd certainly get a lot more stuff done if there was three of me. But that's a whole nother story. That's some science fiction stuff. So what? So you, you get out of that first year, you're checking it out. And I love mm -hmm. how you're, like as a business person, you're like, let's iterate, let's see what happens. And we're going to come back and we're going to, yeah. you know, measure and cut and figure out what we're going to do. So how has it evolved after that first year into where you are now, 10 years? So, Oh God, it's been amazing. Um, so I always tell the story. We've had 30 kids playing. We now have over 300 kids playing. We had uh, one field. Now we have three fields. We have grown so much that we've broken off to a skills program where it's typically kids that are um, higher functioning on the spectrum, as well as like Down syndrome, they are learning to play on their complete own. The other part of our program, each child gets up a bat, each child has a buddy. We couldn't do it post COVID. Um, this year we had to have whoever was in your family bubble had to be your volunteer, but pre COVID, we were up to 1200 volunteers. Every, that's like a cross 1200. And that, but that means like 400 at each site, just to make the numbers easy, every weekend? Not every weekend, over um, 12 weeks. So okay. six spring, six weeks in the fall. St. John's University, go Johnny's. That's uh, my alma mater. What? My, is that your alma mater? Yeah. My buddy, John DiBiase, who was texting me this morning. John, I'm sorry I'm going to do this to you. But he was a former ED of Anabic out in Bayside, Queens. And he's got a, a tattoo on his ankle. The original Redmond, the red, you know, that yeah. Was the last year, that was the last year. Oh, you were before they changed the name, before they became. Yeah, the yep. Yeah. I was. Uh, I ran track there. I was a javelin thrower. Currently, Get out of here. Get out. Did and, you play softball um, there or no? What's that? Did you play softball there or no? You didn't play in golf. No, no. That's a whole nother series <laughs> to have that conversation. I got picked up. I, I put a the coach put a javelin in my hand at my uh, junior college, and I started breaking all sorts of crazy records. And I get picked oh up. Oh my god, dude! We can one I'm, program. I'm, I'm about to do another show, and it, <laughs> I don't even want to say the name of it. I'll say the name, but it's going to be called Really Cool Stuff. And it's like, I just want to talk to you about throwing the javelin for an hour. And that's what like the, the show will be about. And with you and me kind of just kicking it like this, I'm sure we'd have like a lot of fun just talking oh, about it. Oh, yeah, that. for sure. So just in case uh, I need a third show, uh, we'll be uh, <laughs> figuring out when really cool stuff is going to happen. Because I figure you and I could talk about the javelin. And then another week I could talk about somebody who does Reiki. And like, yeah, there you go. All of those things are really cool. So like it kind of fits the bill, right? So. Yeah. All right, so we actually are, we're right up against another break, which is insane, because that's how yeah. fast it goes. It's going too quick. I know, I'm sorry. So that's okay. 
well, let's do one more thing. The skills program, right? Yeah. So that's, what does that mean? Is that like children are separated into- So, different- yeah, they, because they, they've gotten too good to play. So we want to make sure we have safety. So um, Greg Cook, who is our program developer, um, he runs the skills program for us. And uh, Matt, who is from Play Like a Pro, he owns Play Like a Pro. A lot of people have gone there. He's amazing. He's our coach. And these kids now, they've been playing together for over seven years and they, they get up there, they do their warm ups, they, you know, have batting practice and then they actually play a game. They're making plays, they're making double plays, they're hitting the ball over the fence. It is amazing just to see the transformation in those kids over the past seven years and or I've had kids that start out at seven that are 17 now, you know, um, that's, that's what we awesome. But again, you, this year we showed they, pictures side by side. Oh, did you really? Yeah. I yeah. Did, where did you do that at the outing? At the golf outing. Yeah. That's Everybody that's was awesome. like, oh my God, this is awesome. Just to see how the kids were such little babies when they started. So, so here's what I have to tell you. And you probably hear this a lot. And I know my leaders in this sector hear this and they poo poo it. But you, Christine Fitzpatrick, have changed lives. You, okay. what is the ripple effect? of that seven-year-old child who, who was told he or she couldn't play ball yeah. and is yep. now 10 years later having played ball. How did you empower and change the trajectory of their lives? And I'll yeah. go further. How are they going to continue to pay it forward and change other people's lives? That's what this show is. That's what this sector is. That's why I'm so fired up about this stuff. Because if you don't go and join the Miracle League board up in Westchester, that 17-year-old kid doesn't have a baseball league to play in on Long Island for the last 10 years. That's just real right. stuff, man. That is real. My, yep, my yep. passion is because people change the world, right? One person sets things in motion to change other people's lives. And isn't that why we're all here? Aren't we all connected? Like New York telephone. Wasn't there a little commercial? We're all connected. All right. Stop singing, dude. Here's the deal. That's why I get fired up. Because if you have an idea that you think will improve the lives of other people, and I'm not talking about nothing wrong with going on Shark Tank. That's cool. But I'm talking about like real grassroots impact for people. It's not just about millions of dollars and selling your deals to, to Barbara Corcoran and those mm-hmm. folks, you know, Mr. Wonderful. It's about making an impact in your community. And that's what Christine Fitzpatrick has done. We are. Go- I know you have stuff to say. No, I have a couple more layers. We'll peel back. We'll peel back. We're gonna go right back to the break. We'll go to the break. We'll come back. You peel those layers. We'll talk about connections. I'll try to get us out of here on time so Steve Fry's show can start on time. We'll be right back. <laughs> Join us every Tuesday at four PM Eastern for the Mind Behind Leadership, where we focus on what leadership really means to us and to others. We have practical discussions with the CEOs of some of the world's largest companies owners of small businesses and experts in psychology and behavior to get that inside track, what to do, what to avoid, and what really happens. Join me, Graham Dobbin, at the new time, 4 p.m. every Tuesday for the Mind Behind Leadership here live on talkradio.nyc. Hey, everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. Calling all pet lovers. Pet Avengers, assemble! On the Professionals and Animal Lovers show, we believe the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. It mirrors that bond between pets and their owners. Through this program, we come together to learn, educate, and advocate. Join us live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. 
No, it's uh, this is called philanthropy and focus. Just in case you're just checking in, and this is where we amplify the message for nonprofit organizations. I don't know why I did that. So I was just, it's funny because I I was like sharing on the Facebook guys. If you were if you're watching us on Facebook, if not, you can always check us out. Talking alternative broadcasting on Facebook. But I was sharing the website. And then I noticed as my theme song started playing, you were dancing. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to now share Christine so people see her bop it out to the tune. <laughs> that's, that's my uncle, Brendan, Brendan Levy of the Queens Chamber of Commerce, who I told you about when we had a phone conversation earlier this week, because I'm very hooked in the Queens Chamber. But Brendan had a band back in the 90s and they were called The Goods. And now that they're older men, they call themselves Damaged Goods. And they laid down that track like I'm in the industry. now. They laid down that track for me. And that's that that is where that theme song comes from. And, it, you know, you'll probably be singing it later on today just because it's yeah. catchy and it sticks it's with catchy. you. It's catchy. So talk about catchy. We got to catch up because we're running out of time. and We got a lot to cover still. So let's right, peel right. back the onion. I want to talk about then about what's upcoming for the organization and what you need. OK, so I just want to just go back a little bit when we were talking about, you know, having the kids and touching lives and stuff. What we didn't realize what was going to happen with the league, as I say, peel those uh, the layers of the onions back. I had had a young lady send me an email probably about five years ago, and she said, um, I just wanted to send you an email from the perspective of a sibling. So she did not ever acknowledge her brother. He's very low on the spectrum. He's a little violent. Uh, nonverbal. She was very embarrassed that she had a brother on that with autism. So after coming down to the field, she ended up meeting a whole bunch of other siblings. And they all kind of got together and became really good friends. And she said it was like a support group. And now she's so proud. Oh, we just got chills. Now she's so I'm proud about to cry. So you know, with autism and, you know, then she ended up being his buddy for the rest of the season and the, the following years to follow. And also with the parents, we ended up parents networking with each other about different insurances, different PTs that are out there. Three of the parents got together, they, they formed their own nonprofit and um, called Share the Voice, where they give away tricycles, adaptable tricycles. So oh my God, are they here on the island? Uh, she just moved to New Jersey, but they are still on the on I mean, Long Island. We got to know about that, especially. Yeah, I will get you Linda's information. Yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal what they do. And they surprise the kid with the trike. They get the fire department involved. Oh, wow. They just do a whole big thing. They're amazing. So there's been so many awesome things that have happened. And, you know, quickly to getting back to our buddies, the biggest reasons for having the buddies in our view, and we don't really put this on the website or anything for the buddies, but it really is to bring in the atypical person within the community and work with the child with special needs to understand that they're just kids and they wanna have fun and you can approach them, you can be their friends, right? So it's breaking that barrier for bullying kids with special needs. And I said, you know what? We have 1200 volunteers. If 10% of them walk away, right? 120 kids that now stand up for a child with special needs, job well done. Well, game changer, by the way. And I look for a time, you know, like when that's like a, like people go, you know, oh, we don't like, and this is silly and it's going to sound silly. And if you know me and you love me, then it's not going to sound like I'm being mean or rude, but there's going to be a point in time when people go, we don't do that anymore. Like, I don't pick on people for different abilities. Like I'm telling, I, I think that, but I think it takes, you know, hashtag inclusion, right? It takes- yeah. This opportunity where we, what is it? It's an education thing. And I know it in my own yes. home, in the stuff Maybe. that I do, that my kids see it and they watch it and they're aware of it. And I'm not going to, you know, tell stories about some of the special things, you know, my children have done, but I will tell you, they've done things for other people. And, and it's, and it's because of the understanding and the education and the word we yep, started yep. to show off the, just at the beginning with compassion. And it's what it's about. And I think, um, oh my God, what, how young can somebody volunteer for, well, again, we're the League of Yes, so we don't say no. And that's silly enough, but that's how we came up with the League of Yes, because yeah. we seriously told the parents, this is your league, not ours. We'll never say no. But there was one father being a wise guy. It's like, will you coach naked? I'm like, no. <laughs> that's uh, you, not going to happen. I, I know if you want to take that out of the program that, that I just no, said that. No, no, we're not going to take it out of the program because it's hysterical. <laughs> but shame on him for being silly, although very funny. But, <laughs> but you know, he kind of puts you in a predicament there. Not very nice. He's, I'm sure he's a character, but, um, He's so joking. Yeah, yeah I know. So, so we have, if the volunteers are young, 
what we will do is we will have them either be with a parent or somebody that's older. What we have on the third baseline is called our tunnel of love. It's a human tunnel. They stand um, across from each other, they put their hands up. It is hands down the best part for the kids because they hit their home run. Now they run through the tunnel, everyone's cheering, they're doing things, high-fiving them. So we, we can put them on the tunnel. I, the earlier that you can expose any young child to the, and when you come down to the field, you could look at videos. We had a video that went viral, 35 million views. It went around the whole entire world, right? Of this 35 point, million views? 35 million views. I had to count them up because I had the Drew Barrymore show reach out to me. And she's like, can you verify that? And I thought it was 10 million. Wait, was, did, you go on, did you go on the Drew Barrymore show or something? No, oh, not yet. Not yeah. yet. It's cool. in the works. So if you, so look, if you need me to go on the Drew Barrymore show, yeah, I'll go. I don't know good. if you're, I felt like I was being invited. I'm not sure if that's yeah. happened, but kind of more like you invited yourself, to be honest, Tommy D. <laughs> hey, Drew, if you're listening, big fan out here. All right. It, even back to the ET days. If you ever want to get, get the nonprofit sector connector, we'll talk about, why don't you join me? For 60 days of service, Drew Barrymore, you picked a nonprofit. I will bring the full <laughs> numbers it. that I <laughs> grabbed out of the basement, the puzzle pieces. All right, Christine, real quick, lightning yep. round. What does the organization need? And the, the League of Yes, so the website, by the way, is leagueofyes.org. Not the league, leagueofyes.org. What do you need? Give quick. So what we need, quickly, um, we'd love to get new board members, people that have experience. We really want to make this into a national program. I would like to start a board of advisors. Um, of course, we're always looking for sponsorship. I don't have to say that. Uh, we have Breakfast with Santa coming up on December 4th. We are looking for toys. We're actually looking for a breakfast sponsor as well. Since what does that look like? What's the breakfast sponsor? What's uh, that? What, what's, is there a number for the breakfast sponsor? $2,000. Uh, $2, okay. Yeah. So if we, because we didn't have of COVID last year, we yeah. want to make it even bigger and better for the kids. I have a garage full of toys that we didn't give out last year. I want to double and triple it. I would love to make up for last year. We give each child a toy and the siblings. Awesome. I would love for these kids to walk out with two or three toys each. You know what that sounds like? Bing, bing, bing. Sounds like a day of service. Call me. Yeah. We'll figure out what, how I can help. I definitely I want you in that elf outfit. I will, dude. Don't even threaten me with a good time. You, Did just, you just dude me. Yeah, you I do it all the time. Me. We're I, there. I, I, I love my, it. Yeah, yeah. I call my wife, dude. Like, dude. Seriously, <laughs> I'm in. Get the. Actually, my sister and her husband have elf costumes. We gotta, we gotta shut this show down right now. But they have elf costumes. And my brother is kind of a giant person, so he looks even sillier in an elf costume because he kind of he's very it. tall. He's like six and you know six and like a half. Yeah, he like Will Ferrell. So, um, but I maybe I'll buy, borrow one of their costumes. But yeah, don't threaten me with a good time. You kidding? All right. So, leagueofyes.org. I am extra hyped today and I can barely contain myself. And, and the show is just zipped by. Here's what I need to tell you December 4th, 9 to 11 a.m. is I played like a pro. Play it like a pro. Where's that? Yep, in Hop Hop. Hop Hop. Play it like a pro in Hop Hop. What I have to do is just close with some gratitude because we are at the Thanksgiving here. We will not have a live show next week. We will be back on the 26th. Vera Jones of Colorful Talks will be here with me. And it's really about how to educate our, our youth on the race conversation, you know, real young. So as, as young people, and there's programs and, and games and different things for, to, to have that conversation. Stay tuned. Uh, Steve Fry is here next. The only other thing I want to tell you is I am involved with my buddy Dave Lynn on something called Gratitude Rising, which is a campaign a uh, peer-to-peer fundraising campaign. And we're going to be rolling that out to nonprofit organizations uh, this coming Wednesday, the 24th at 11 a.m. So if you want to learn more about that, send me a note, Tommy D at philanthropyandfocus.com or uh, you know, check me out on LinkedIn because I'm posting this everywhere. Christine Fitzpatrick, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for coming thank on the you. show. I appreciate You're awesome. it. awesome. Emily, I know you got to get us out of here. Emily, thanks for visiting with me. I hope to see you again soon. Emily Shulman on the other side of the glass. Steve Fry coming up next. It's always Friday with that guy. We'll be right back. I know we won't. Happy we'll be back in two weeks. Later, Christine. Later, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.